on how to use kcalc in uh, our thermodynamics class. kcalc is a super useful little uh, Excel spreadsheet that calculates the equilibrium uh, constant for any reaction we choose at any temperature we choose. Um, so I've got that open right here right now, and I want to show you how to set it up. I've also opened up another spreadsheet called Props or Properties, which has a whole bunch of uh, our compounds that we might be using for reactions and their relevant data, such as delta H of formation, delta G of formation, and the heat capacity constants A, B, C, and D. We are going to need that if we're going to use kcalc properly. So let me take you through what we have here. When you have a reaction in mind that you wish to model, you start by putting the name of each species over here. The names are just for you. The computer doesn't actually use them, but we need them. Uh, and the stoichiometric number. And remember, stoichiometric numbers are negative for reactants and positive for products. And you got to make sure your reaction is well and properly balanced. Uh, and then using properties, uh, you are going to fill out the delta H and delta G of formation for each entity, as well as the heat capacity constant. Why do we need these heat capacity constants? Well, when you change the temperature of a reaction, that means we've got to pretty much integrate CPDT from our reference temperature, which is 298K, up to the reaction temperature. And uh, if this reaction is completely isothermal, we do the integration uh, for the product and the reactants um, to the same temperatures. Uh, and if this reaction is, uh, temperature is changing as we go, because say it's an adiabatic reaction, uh, we need a slightly different approach because it means that the temperature is unknown. So it makes the uh, integration a little bit tricky to integrate to a temperature you don't know. Uh, so that's something, a topic for a different day. So right now we're going to just assume we have a isothermal uh, reaction with known temperature. So once you have uh, the stoichiometric numbers in there properly, the names, all of the relevant constants in here, uh, you can experiment by changing the temperature of the reaction and seeing what the impact is on the delta H of that reaction the delta G of that reaction, and uh, the equilibrium constant Ka for that reaction. You can see this reaction, if you've just noted what I have set up here, it's methane and oxygen going to carbon dioxide and water. This is basically burning natural gas. It is a immensely favorable reaction, and you can see that reflected in the value we, we have found for Ka. And you can also see, you probably have a, a good inkling, um, this is a very exothermic reaction. We are releasing a lot of energy here. So as I drive the temperature up, you see that the Ka goes down. But even so, it's still a huge number. I'm going to take a moment right now and give you a note on huge numbers. Uh, this equation that is sitting behind all of this, remember, uh, has an exponential in it. And that means small differences in the numbers we use initially may result in very big differences in our values uh, later on in the calculation. So if you are doing this calculation and uh, you put a negative 393.5 and your classmate puts in negative 393.51, um, out here in the Ka, you may get uh, what seem to be very different answers. You know, somebody might get uh, 2.1 times 10 to the 52, and someone else might get uh, uh, 8 times 10 to the 52, or something times 10 to the 51, or times 10 to the 50th even. Um, also, this is a place where the way your computer works makes a difference. So people who are on uh, different uh, floating point systems, different parameters within uh, Excel may get different answers, even if they put everything else in identically. And I want to convince you that this is not a big deal. And you're like, but Vigent, it's my answer is literally off by 10 million. That sounds like a big deal. Yes, 
but as a percentage error, it's really, really, really small. And so what we should all find is that we will all agree on how Ka comes out when we are in the range uh, where Ka really matters. Say we're in the range from a Ka of a thousand to down to Ka of 0 0.0001, um, we should all about get the same answer. And when we are way out on the edges of, of likelihood, where Ka is very large, bigger than uh, 10 to the 5, or Ka is very small, um, smaller than 10 to the negative, say, 10, um, we'll get different answers, but those answers will all mean the same thing. That is, if it's a very, very small number, very, very small number, something times 10 to the negative 10, the reaction uh, does not proceed in the for, uh, forward direction. In fact, it proceeds in the backward direction. Um, the uh, And for the very, very large numbers, the reaction proceeds in the forward direction uh, as far as it can go, given uh, the composition of the mixture. So we'll get the same answer in terms of meaning. This reaction went forward, it didn't go forward. Um, but we will get different answers in terms of the exact number. And the place where, where our exact numbers will uh, matter, they will be the same. So be chill about that. All right, one more thing I wanted to show you is just how to change this for the stoichiometric number. So say I wanna set this up for the water gas shift reaction. Uh, if I am setting this up for the water gas shift reaction, I want to put in the stoichiometric numbers and the names and the chemical species values for that reaction. So you recall that reaction is methane, so I get to leave that the same. Uh, and then I bring in some steam. Uh, so I do water. And this is water vapor. So guess what? I can just use these same values. I'm going to just move that down. Uh, and then uh, what do we get from that? We get hydrogen. And we get carbon. Okay, and uh, how did that work? Uh, we get um, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So the methane, we get, um, I think we get three hydrogens, correct? Uh, and then, because, yep, uh, and then we have how many carbon monoxides? Let's think about that. We only have one of those and the water yep okay so this is all balanced now double check me and so now we better go out and get the appropriate numbers for this so you remember for things in their standard in their base state like hydrogen and oxygen delta h and delta g are zero uh, this is a big spreadsheet to look through the props spreadsheet so i type things in to the search and there we go, hydrogen gas up here. Oh, actually that's hydrogen sulfide. So I better keep searching. That's funny, good example. All right, hydrogen H2, there we go. This is the one we want. There's the zeros, but we still need the values for CP. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna come down in here and paste that in. Uh, now I need carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide. Oh, this is an error you'll see if you left stuff highlighted from the previous time you selected it. So just be aware of that before you panic about any errors that have come up. And so here are all my values that I need for carbon monoxide. Okay, and I had methane um, and water. Okay, so here we go. So I have methane and water and let's go down here and look at the temperatures. If we look at our base case, we will see, hey, look, that delta G, delta G is the same answer we got before. So that's good to see. Uh, here's delta H, that's nice to see also. Uh, and our Ka, something times 10 to the negative 25th. So this reaction does not proceed in the forward direction. Uh, in fact, at equilibrium, it would much rather be the uh, reactants than to be the products. So let's uh, change the temperature and see when we start getting appreciable forward movement. 
Um, I'm thinking, since you just saw this, I typed in 800 and it's at 0 0.03, that if we solve it is gonna turn out to give us some products. Um, and if we have put together the concentrations in the reactor properly, we might get quite a bit of product. So that's good. Um, let's just kick it up another notch. Oh yeah, look at that. So at 900K, uh, this reaction's really uh, going fine in the forward direction now. So that's exciting. Uh, so that's how we use this, and this is how this works. Remember, um, you also have the option to use the shortcut approach. The shortcut approach assumes that your temperature change is small enough that you can treat uh, delta H as a constant that doesn't vary with temperature. Uh, that may or may not be a really good assumption. Let's just check this here. For example, so 298, this was 206. Uh, up at, whoops, sorry. Uh, up at 900, it's uh, 224. So actually, you know, uh, the uh, delta H's variation with temperature, not so huge. So maybe we could have used the shortcut and gotten pretty good answers for this. Not perfect answers, but pretty good answers for this. Uh, but that's not true of all reactions. So it's useful um, since we have the option of doing the full integration, which is what kcalc does, we may as well uh, use it. But I want you to, to check both. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. See you soon.